struggling to really find what they're what they're passionate about or what they're skilled at, um, what are certain ways that parents can show support for their child looking for a specific skill? You know, this is after the parents already tried to identify certain things that indicate they're good at a skill, but things are either just not working out or they're just they're at a loss for for really finding their their profession. What are some ways that parents could be more supportive or uh, I guess a, a better parent in a way towards the child finding a profession? It's actually a very, uh, it's, it's a beautiful question. Um, and I, and I'd love to, I'd love to answer with a, with a real life answer, something that I've actually just gone through myself uh, with my daughter. Um, my daughter from when she grew up, from when she was a baby, um, she was a, like a fashion designer kind of a kind of individual putting colors together and uh, she was a year old and she was like putting tops and bottoms together with different color matching and what color schemes and stuff like that and my wife we were like yep she's a natural uh, my wife was a uh, makeup artist so it's the the artistry of color is there um when you when she grew up and she's growing up i knew she has more with color and more with fashion uh, until I told her, I said, you know, you're good with color. Why don't you go get a course in how to do people's palettes? You know, do their color professionally. You already do it naturally. Go learn how to do it professionally and learn the real skill behind it. And it will just take you off like on steroids. And uh, she did. I, I encouraged her to go. Um, both me and her mother encouraged her to go. And uh, she's, she went, she's, uh, she learned this beautiful course and she's on her path now of her passion and she's happy of where she is. She found something that actually will give her what she likes. And that's what I tell every parent out there. Look at what your kids are good at and find the course that works for them. Find the skill that can enhance what they're already doing so they can do it professionally. Well, what if a parent's just not so talented to, to see that creative, you know, skill in their child? What can they do to really, to really help their child? Because obviously every parent wants, to, wants the best and has their children's best interest in mind. But what's something that they can, you know, if you have a little bit of an answer to that, what's something they can do? This comes back to something that you've mentioned before about the schools or the community. So like I live in Crown Heights. Uh, we have here a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, his name is Shaw Wordy. And he opened up a uh, organization here called for young adults. Um, you know, a whole, a whole like uh, a program uh, in essence to, for people to help them find their skills and their specialties and stuff like that. And I do believe that every community has this now. I do believe, I, I, I believe, not certain, but I believe that every community has it. Was it there when we were younger and when I was younger? No, uh, but there was also no internet and there was also no social networking and there was no, none of that, which means we all grew um, on our own just by watching and uh, seeing other people and just try to find what you're good at on your own. And we were pretty good at finding what we do on our own. Um, today's, today's children are also extremely smart. And I say that with uh, certainty in my generation growing up in the same age, simply because the knowledge is so much greater than what we had. The knowledge is unlimited. So if the knowledge is unlimited, it means it really opens and broadens your horizon into you being able to actually even find yourself what you do and being able to broaden your own passions and your own uh, skills. Right. And, and, and I do see this. I see, see this all the time from all my children's classmates. Um, I pay attention. I see different talents and I see what other kids are good at, you know, and then I'll throw at them and I'll say, did you ever think of 
this and this skill and they're like it's like yeah i you know i do it's you know um but definitely um if there is if there's something that could come out of this so it, definitely there could be more of more uh, more guidance which means um i actually do this right now i have different younger younger uh, adults uh, you know, between the ages of 19 and 25 uh, that actually come to me and talk to me about their, uh, about their passions, about what they do and how I can guide them a little bit into, the, into a better direction with my experience. Um, and I do that. I do that with pleasure. And I, whoever, whoever comes to me, I'm happy to help because I'm happy to see the desire to actually want to move forward. Um, and I think that every single parent or any single experienced adult who watches this and is able to help guide any other young adult into the proper path should help and do that right. with the pleasure and with the, with the kind heart. That's beautiful. So I'm saying I'm getting from your answer that meaning if the parent, if the parent's not really sure what to do, the parent should really look for, you know, people in their network that can help agreed or find something or, and talk about talk with your child if you can't figure it out then have a discussion right what do you like to do you're not going to get not every single kid is going to go oh i want to be a lawyer okay because those are the only four reasons why somebody needs to go to college a lawyer a uh, lawyer accountant even accountant doesn't need to go to school because there's accounting accounting school so, and there's from programs for that so you have a lawyer uh, in medical field um, and if you want to become an engineer right. um, or Christian. architect, you know, so these are, these are things that you need, you, you, you unfortunately need to go to college for, uh, but everything else for a career, there's no reason for it. There's absolutely no reason because nothing is guaranteed. You can go to college for four years and then come out and now, oh, you wasted four years. And now you could go to go get a job that will pay you $10,000 more a year. And now all it's doing is paying you back. For, for the for the wasted four years, which is paying you off with the little dividends over the next ten years, right. um, it's it, I'm telling you right now, it's not needed. You don't need it um, to get a job. You can get a job. What learn? You go online. Go on YouTube. YouTube today is the free freest uh, university you could uh, you could find. You could find any skill you want. You want to learn how to for, for any job you want. Go learn. Go learn on YouTube University for. Uh, uh, for, for, for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and you'll know enough just to get that job. And then you'll learn on experience on, on the job itself. If, uh, if that's what you want. That's true. I mean, I, I do some web design and a lot of it I learned from YouTube. Um, you know, a lot of color mixing, like you were saying, like your daughter does. Yeah. I also learned. So to sharpen your skills. Mm -hmm. And the best part is that many you have the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's the pros that are making the videos often. Um, and they're turning what they, what they're so passionate about into so that they can inspire others. Um, and that's really beautiful that we have that tool. Um, now what if a parent doesn't really have like so much of a business network to help, help their children, meaning if they don't know someone that's, they just not sure who to turn to, what's something they can look at to try to find someone to help their child succeed. What's an example of, of someone who doesn't have a um, someone who's in Kaila, a teacher? Someone, uh, someone that's a teacher and 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 his whole life is is just because of either stress or whatever in in, in work. He's not um, he doesn't have the open mindedness to really try to see who can who can help. What's like um, I know you mentioned that there's like different communities at different organizations that help, but what is something that can I guess help a parent form a good perspective to really be open to all paths of success for a child? Okay. Um, number one is you, you're pushing on this question and we're coming back to it a third time already. Um, Apparently, I, I did not give a satisfactory answer to it. No, I'm, I'm just curious to... No, which is fine. I, I, let me... I, I'm going to try to tune in to the focus here a little bit. 
uh, I, I think it's more of a, it's, it's almost a message. Okay. If a parent is not in the network, and I'm gonna say this, it's almost impossible because every teacher, so let's say your circle of friends is your teachers, okay? Remember that you are teachers of 25 to 30 children every single year. You've had a relationship with one of those parents at least, and maybe even 20% of the class, you've had a relationship with the parents where you spoke about the student and you had that. And you know that out of that 20% that you spoke with, you know that at least three of them are a successful businessman. Okay, we're taking down the numbers down to the bottom here. So you know, throughout your children's years, all you have to do is look back and say, from all the parents that I taught, which one of them can I go over to and ask them, say, can you please have a conversation with my son or my child? Okay, it's that that it's it's so simple. There are so many people around you. It doesn't have to be your network. It could be somebody that you simply know. And in our community, as we you started the whole conversation, you started, we are a community. And as a community, we help each other out. It's, char it's tzedakah, charity, uh, it helping one another. Helping one another doesn't mean by give, giving somebody $100 to go buy some food. That's for the unfortunate. We all have to help each other out. But helping, the greatest help you can do and there's nothing greater is helping somebody lead a future. That is the greatest help you can do for somebody. And when you, when a, when somebody like a, like a teacher or somebody who doesn't have a network will go over to somebody that he just knows, he's not a network, he's not a friend, but he knows him and says, I know that you're successful. Can you please take a half hour, have a conversation with my child and see how you could maybe help them guide them in, 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 in a way that can help them out with their with their life parnasa. Okay. Do you know that sometimes all it takes is a 30 minute conversation? That's it it takes. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not. It's sometimes all it takes is a 30 minute guy. I've had these conversations. I've had them. And within 15 minutes I was able to fine tune this young individual into the direction he should go in. Wow. 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 That, that's a, that, I really like that answer. Um, thank you so much. Um, okay. Moving on to the third question, which was actually the main point uh, of this interview was after all that we've said on, on how much benefit it is to, uh, to actually find a flourishing career. What do you think are certain things that, Maybe we could um, modify a little bit in yeshiva or a little extra things we could teach in yeshiva that would help um, a general professional life. Okay. Uh, just like there is, um, you know, every yeshiva has, you know, has a recess sports hour um, I think that there should be an optional um, computer class. And the reason I say computer class, it's a very interesting, uh, you know, word. you just throw in computers, like at the end of the day, without computers, it's very hard to find anything. You can't even learn how to succeed. You can't learn how to do anything. Um, I think the basics, the basics of computers teach the basics of programming and the basics of, you know, spreadsheets and, um, you know, just the basic tool toolkit for life. Uh, just by knowing these few items um, and a little bit of programming can just give clarity to the, to the student to say, okay, which, uh, which direction do I want to go? Maybe they like computer networking. Maybe they like computer programming. Or maybe they like designing, but still the center of everything is the computer. Right. At the, at, the, at the center of everything today. I know that in the other, in, in a lot of the firm circles, they counter the word computer. That's like, no, that's like pure evil. 
even even to them, I would say there is a way to do it in a kosher way where you're still teaching skill and not internet browsing. Um, where you're worried about the internet, you can do it without internet. There's a lot of tools that are there without internet. You, do, you don't have to teach internet browsing. You can just teach them programming. All the skills we spoke about without having any access to the internet. For sure. You know, later on when they become their, their life and they do it as a business, fine, yeah, they can go on the internet. So I just want to address the, uh, the, the internet because that's a controversial, uh, you know, topic, the word internet. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I mean, when I was a kid, my, so my father worked for Microsoft for a bit. And uh, so we always were, there was always computers hanging around the house and whatnot. And so like from third grade, um, I had like a offline computer, I'm completely offline. So I'm not skilled with anything regarding networks. Like I couldn't set up a modem or a router from, for the life of me, but everything else regarding computers, I'm very, I, I'm, I'm, I'm flourishing at because all these skills and just tools and learning how the computer works with things, um, I was able to learn and I really never browsed the internet until, until like high school. So, um. you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that. Um, I never learned computer networking. Um, I never knew this stuff and people go to school to learn networking. I learned networking from one three minute conversation that I had with somebody that I said, what's an IP address and how do I assign one? Okay, he told me how to assign it. He explained me what an IP address is, and that was it. Okay, within within two days, I was setting up networks. Okay, what? That's because that's the way. For example, my brain is wired that way. Which means going back to the original discussion that we had is that you yourself understand what you're good at. You understand. You know how your brain works. You know how you're wired. Use it. Utilize what you're good at. You know what you're good. You know what you you know how your own brain works. I don't have to tell you how your brain works. That's great. Um, one last little small question. Um, aside from computers, is there any like small thing that you wish you could have learned that you shiver that would have helped you professional life? And by that I mean like maybe like social skills or just different different character development things that really help that you feel are very useful in the business world and professional world um, that you wish would be learned or taught by, you know, the general from community? Um, okay. Social skills really doesn't matter whether you do it well, you do it, don't do it well. People either like you, they don't like you, or they'll laugh at or enjoy your, your awkward social, uh, appearance or whatever it is it's not going to change you getting the business or not getting the business it's not going to change your success level or not being that you're on social cue or whatever it is it's, it's i don't think that helps and if you really want it you could go buy a book on on social behavior and uh and read it and get you something that does you don't need to go to learn any of those skills um okay it went off topic here uh what can schools actually do? Okay, I, I, I would say if I was in school today and I wish that my religious school would do certain things that can help me in life. Uh, one is if it's a school that does not teach English, we don't, you don't need to learn English. You need to learn how to read and write. That's it, just learn how to read and write if that's possible. Um, I know a lot of people oppose it. A lot of people that say it is a it it is still a controversial topic, uh, but I wish they did. I'm not talking about studies; just read and write and basic math. Um, what else? Um, like negotiation—that's an example. Huh? The art of negotiation. You know, someone. The art of negotiation. You're learning tomorrow. Right. That's all there. The art of negotiation, every single yeshiva student that comes out is a master negotiator by definition. Right. I didn't have to go to school to become a master negotiator. That's great. That's great. Okay. Um, closing out this interview, is there anything else that you want to 
bring up or you want to mention? Yes. Uh, as a closing statement, I wish to tell any viewer, uh, any young adult who's watching this, that believe in the word Hashgacha Pratis. Hashgacha Pratis means divine providence. In simple English, it means that Hashem looks out to you in every step you take. And understand that you are not the master of your success. You are simply a pawn in Hashem's success through you. And what you want to dive into Hashem is say, Hashem, allow me to be the proxy of success through you today. You have to work hard and you do your job. Hashem will do his, but don't forget for one second that Hashem is the one that gives you the success. Hashem gives you the blessing and he will as long as you remember him. If you think that you're on your own, then you will be forgotten as well. But if you take Hashem with you, every single step of your, of your skill, of your profession or whatever you're doing, and never forget Hashem, not even for one minute, you'll see how strong your success is and you will start seeing Hashem's blessing in every single aspect to know that in places where it should have been impossible for you to get, and you'll say, wow, how did I get that? No, it's not how Hashem, thank you, Hashem. And that's the message I'm telling you, that Hashem is the one who gives it to you, not you yourself and not the guy who gave you the business and not the nice guy who gave you the contract. No, it's Hashem who gave it to you. And remember that throughout your whole life, your whole working life, and you'll see how much happier you'll be and how much more successful you'll be. May Hashem keep on blessing all of you with much success, much love, and much ease.